I just want to say one word to you. Plastics. Well, everybody, welcome to updates, emissions, additions, corrections, comments, and questions, round two. See what I did there? Yeah. Round two. Uh, okay, updates. Uh, currently working on Aoshima, Athern. I had a request about Williams Brothers, uh, which I'm trying to get some information on. And I have this old kit right here that I got some time ago on eBay. And the name of the company doesn't appear anywhere except in one word in English on the instruction sheet. In tiny little letters, it's Maniac. I don't know if you recognize that logo. And uh, I can't find anything on them anywhere. Uh, some of these companies are really hard to research. Uh, let's see. Uh, I am uh, into this book now. I am planning on the box art episode on the, on the artists. Uh, and uh, this is the book by Thomas Graham. And there's a lot of information aside from this book that I'm going to be using that's going to take quite a while to research because there's a lot in here and that's that I may have to break that down into sections. Uh, let's see. Uh, I did contact round two. I had several people ask what their logo, the kangaroo with the boxing glove, is referenced to. I only made a guess. I sent them an email. Haven't heard anything back, but I'm pretty sure they've got bigger fish to fry than answering weird questions from some obscure guy with a tiny YouTube channel in the backwaters of the internet. Uh, omissions. Uh, when I put Tamiya up, I uh, completely missed the uh, the RC four-wheel drive section they have, which is substantial, and the Mini uh, four-wheel drive. And the Minis, I got a lot of people saying, what about the Mini? So apparently they're a very popular series. I also missed the water, well, the entire ship series. I did show some pictures, but I didn't mention them both their big 1 to 350s and uh, the Waterline series. Additions, things I'd like to add. First off, uh, I also, when I did to me, I actually had a slide put to the side that I just forgot to put in about their Nitro Car series. They do Nitro Cars also. Uh, they also do uh, Dinosaurs. Yeah. Um, and the Dinosaurs on 1 to 35 scale, which if you want to have a little fun, you could Get yourself some 135 scale armor and make yourself some sort of attack of Jurassic Park or, you know, whatever. Could be kind of, yeah. What's life without a little whimsy? Uh, let's see. Also, I noticed that a lot of the stuff on the uh, website was out of stock. Well, to me, it has these red dots they put by everything that's out of stock. And they must be going great guns because they have a lot of out of stock stuff. Uh, I do read the comment sections. Uh, I try to respond to uh, ones uh, uh, that are need a response. Uh, I read every single comment, and yes, it takes a while. But I'm more than happy to do it. I, I love the feedback. Uh, also, I need to, uh, well, I don't need to. I just want you to know, I don't monetize. This is a labor of love. I don't have a Patreon or any of that stuff. I just, I do it because I like it. And the positive feedback, the overall positive feedback, and even the, the legitimate criticism I've gotten is, has, it just inspires me to keep going. Uh, what can I say? I'm an attention junkie. <laughs> uh, let's see. Corrections. Uh, I had said that uh, the, the skit, Here Comes the Judge, after doing the uh, NPC video, was Sammy Davis Jr. on the TV show Laugh-In, and he did do it in the last season, but actually... Uh, the first one to do it on the TV show Laugh-In was the comedian Flip Wilson, and he did it for several seasons. But apparently uh, it was Flip Wilson who uh, initiated it on the show. And uh, that's a uh, correction. I was, that correction came to me from the comment section. Thanks for that. Okay, comments. Brian C. This is, a, this is great. Uh, especially if you're an AMT Star Trek fan. Brian C. says, I was the last employee at AMT's James Street Injection Molding Plant in Baltimore. The machines had been disassembled and shipped to Ertl when I happened upon some test shots that had been thrown in a dumpster. These were special glow-in-the-dark shots of the Starship Enterprise that were an experiment by our industrial engineer, Tom Gooding. They were never made available as a finished product from AMT. I still have them around here somewhere, 
Brian, I want them. If you uh, want to give them a safe home, but I warn you, I will build them. That, <laughs> I would have bought a glow-in-the-dark Enterprise. I would have probably said that's from, uh, uh, what was the episode, the Tholian Web, where it was pulsing in and out. Um, that's just, <laughs> this is the kind of stuff that makes us all worthwhile. Okay, from Ronald. Did you know that Ed Big Daddy Roth blamed the Beatles for his Ravel kit's sales decline? Kids were into electric guitars and drums, and Ed left Ravel to start Chopper's Magazine and Custom Motorcycles. I had no idea. I used to listen to music while I was building models, so I'm not sure uh, if Big Daddy was right there or not, but it's, it's an interesting idea. Okay, now the dumpster story. Uh, man, amazing how much fun you could have in a dumpster in the 50s, 60s, and 70s. Uh, this is from Orange Lion. I now feel compelled to share my own epic dumpster story. No human body parts, well, not actual flesh. Aww. Dad was a flying modeler and had been partners in a hobby shop in Buenos Aires. We were all into plastic models. Uh, okay, okay. Anyway, there we were dumpster diving with our friends and we hit the mother load, a dumpster full of models and kits. All sorts in various states of assembly or still in their boxes, plane ships, cars, just tossed out for us to find. I specifically remember a monogram Phantom Mustang because of all the colored parts. Parents didn't believe us when we told them where we got the stuff, so we had to take it out and show Dad the bin. It took me a few years into my adulthood, but it occurred to me that they had belonged to a boy who was probably moving into adulthood himself, or maybe off to college, or maybe into the service, or maybe he just discovered girls. Uh, we all went through that stage. <clears throat> uh, I have still have a few parts from that discovery in my spare parts stash. <laughs> Oh, the body parts. One of the models was a broken Renwall Invisible Man. <laughs> so, you see? Body parts! Uh, from James. Being a latecomer to the market in the 60s, MPC relied on a creative sales staff that thought of model, kids, model kits as toys and didn't really understand the appeal of model kits to older and serious hobbyists. One idea that flew well was the inclusion of customizing parts, such as a uh, rack to hold skis and ski poles on the rear of the car. One that crashed and burned was the idea that greater parts count means you were getting a greater value for your money. However, this meant that MPC simply molded most of the parts kits in halves with serious fit issues that proved troublesome in assembly and turned a lot of hobbyists off. All right, well, you see, there you go. Looks good in the boardroom, doesn't always fly out in the sales room. From Ronald. The first customizer George Todev hired was Dean Jeffries, whose manta ray was kitted by MPC. Daryl Star Starbird's Cosma Ray was his only MPC kit. Don't forget Flint, Michigan's Carl Casper, whose phone booth, as well as others, were also done by MPC. Eventually, George Barris was on board and did those TV cars and trucks. And my understanding is that uh, Barris and Jeffries, there was, uh, from, and of course, this is one I've gotten online, but uh, it's apparently it was a beef between those two guys. It seems that Jeffries really did his own metal bending, where Barris was more running a business and had people working for him, or so goes the legend. So leave your comments in the section below. Questions. Movie models. Who made the tanks used in the Godzilla movies? M24 Chaffees and Type 61s. Okay, uh, I started doing some research on this, and I think those models initially were made in house. There's scant information about it, which is odd because, you know, normally movie sites are all about how we did the technical effects. In the original, I, I, in the original 1953-54 Godzilla movie, they, they had to be built in-house because there were uh, simply no plastic model kits of the M24 Chaffees they used. I've gone to Scalemates and a few other places and looked, and there just weren't any plastic. Plastic kits were still extremely new in, in the early 50s, and uh, I, I couldn't find a single company that was making them. 
Plus, the Japanese are fantastic model builders, which probably explains one reason they're so dominant in the industry. Uh, they did look like they possibly could have been wooden models, but I really couldn't tell. Tamiya had motorized its tanks from early on, even when they were made out of wood. I don't know if they're remote control or not, but uh, I think the original movie, they were probably made in-house. They, they might have used Tamiya kits as a base. They could have used wooden Tamiya kits as a basis. They could have been wooden Tamiya kits, but uh, I, I can't find anything out about that. Uh, as the movies progressed into uh, the second movie, uh, which came out a year or two later, originally I think called The Fire Monster or something, and uh, later Godzilla raids again, uh, there were uh, basically kind of the same thing. And I went looking to see what I could find. I did find one snippet in the mid 60s, uh, 64, 66, they made uh, um, Godzilla versus Mothra. Uh, well, in that movie, according to a, just a snippet I could find on the Wikipedia page about it, or Wikizilli page, there, there was a place called Ihara's Models. And I don't know if this was a model shop or a custom model making house, but it says that they were 115 scale aluminum models that they bought from Ahara's Models. I couldn't find anything else. I couldn't find a picture other than a screenshot from, from the movie. Um, now, in just before that movie, a couple years before that, there was uh, King Kong versus Godzilla. And that movie is, is interesting. It's also supposedly one of the top seen like fan favorites, uh, despite the fact that some of the special effects are just completely clownish or cartoonish. But other special effects are actually reasonably convincing. Uh, of course, they were sailing in the world's roomiest submarine, but that's more set design thing. Uh, if you've ever been in a sub, and I recommend if you get a chance to tour one, you do. Privacy and personal space are not really a thing there. But anyway, get back to the point. Uh, the This is uh, one of the early melting tank scenes, and where Godzilla attacks, and it's all Shermans. And why one of these Shermans has a red star on the front of it? I don't know, maybe a Soviet officers were there in an officer exchange program. Hmm. You see a lot of tanks in motion at one time. I don't see any antennas on them. I don't know if they're radio controlled or just motorized ones that let go. There were some kit models that were in production then they could have used. Uh, I found that uh, three companies, Tamiya, Nippon Hobby and Heller were making uh, plastic model tanks at that point, uh, Type 61s, and uh, there were there were some Shermans and Chaffee kit models in production. So later movies, they may have been off the shelf kit models, but the stuff, given that it's motorized and everything, I'm kind of inclined to think they built them all in house. There is a history of uh, off-the-shelf kit models being used in movies. Of course, we, we talked about uh, the AMT kit being used as the Constellation in the episode The Doomsday Machine and again in Trouble Tribbles. Uh, we also know, if, if you're a movie history buff, there's a, a somewhat apocryphal story that the uh, budget movie maker Ed Wood had used uh, hubcaps for his UFOs in... Uh, what's considered the worst movie ever made, Plan 9 from Outer Space, which I've seen and it's bad. But actually they were the Lindbergh line kits. They were the same, they, he didn't put the little motors on them because he was spinning them, but uh, there's here's some, I'm gonna put up a picture so you can see that uh, it, in fact, I believe one of the original ones is still on private collection. Uh, another, another quick movie reference, apparently the TIE bombers in The Empire Strikes Back were, uh, they use the wings off of actual kit of Darth Vader's TIE fighter, which of course had the cupped solar panels on it. So there's a partial kit being used. But I still have the two Mustangs to deal with, and I'm in the middle of a Czech model's uh, Brewster Buffalo 132nd scale, which was missing the C sprue that had a lot of the internal components, but they're so small, and I'm not going to detail the cockpit that much the way I intend to use the model. So. Not a problem. Okay, now I'm just rambling. Mm.
I just had a real bad idea. <laughs> yeah. Oh, what the heck, why not? They can kill me, but they can't eat me. That's against the law. <laughs>